I'm good, actually. Good. Did you do something special for your beautiful wife for Mother's Day? Um, we hung out with family and had a good time. And that'll work. Oh, is that the uh, blue blazer, red tie day? No. no. Somehow I saw a photo pop up on Facebook with a bunch of um, Robertson slash whatever greens with blue blue. Uh, and we're we'll wearing the same. No, no, no. That's uh, and actually, if you go up to her office, I mean her. Maybe right I saw in her office that picture. Could be. So her uh, her side of the family a couple of Christmases ago got everybody together, That's and sweet. Uh, yeah, it was, which was great. And then brought in a guy to who took local wedding pictures to take. Picture of family, family. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, that was good. That yeah. was good. How about you? Did the uh, kids... Yeah, my wife, my, my wife, my wife decided that what she really wanted for Mother's Day was to go into Manhattan alone <laughs> without me and go to a, a spin class. <laughs> so she goes, you cook for their whole family and then I'll come back. So I, we okay. had, we had a bunch of uh, her family over for a change. Whatever, whatever. Which doesn't happen. Yeah, whatever makes her happy. Whatever I don't makes care. Her happy. This is good. So, she's into her biking. Yeah. So. Congratulations on uh, Joe's note and the final accomplishment on, uh, on I the JT. The oh, the JT thing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was supposed to uh, send Jeff Blatt a note when the eagle had landed. <laughs> he wanted me to send him, you know, some kind of a code. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, hopefully this is not the only time we can talk. I know you don't have a ton of time, but you had thoughts about... Um, Knowing that I'm still trying to see if there's a little bit of a little bit of short-term stuff, yeah. knowing that there's not a lot, but maybe there's a little bit, which would be helpful. But um, even if it's just helping her sick frame some thinking or whatever for right. two weeks or whatever. So, um, and I'm sitting out with Bethany right after this to sort of say, I think this is what you should do, and here's why I think you should do that, and right. let her sort of poke holes in it and. Lori and I are going to spend chunks of time over the next couple of days uh, on that stuff as well. But you had ideas, I think, about... Well, I, look, my personal opinion is, and I think you would agree, finance is probably not the role. Like, financial reporting... Financial reporting is not a role. Right, I, finance is different. Everybody. But financial reporting, I personally can't stand myself. And I think, you know, because you and I both are very similar. Like, we like to be entrepreneurial. We like to kind of do deals. We like to understand the operational side of it. Yeah. I just think doing anything finance... Pure finance is a bad idea, and biz dev to me feels like that's really where you, uh, you. I think you'd be a lot happier there. That's something we talked to you about a while ago. We just don't have that many roles for biz no, dev. Andy, it's a, that's uh, you know I'm 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 disappointed that I kind of uh, heard more of what I wanted to hear in the description, you know, or, and, you know the, and things evolve. It wasn't a bad. It wasn't like, a, I mean, it may not have been a pleasant experience all the time, but it's never a bad experience to do something different. No, I'm... You also learn something in the process. Like, you know, you learn, I don't want to do that kind of role in the future. But. I, look, I did not go in setting all that. It doesn't really matter, right? I didn't realize it was, it was going to be as financial reporting heavy, or I would have yeah, said, yeah. you're crazy, Andy. That's not my strength. I'm as good as anybody around, and I count you in that bucket, at cost accounting thought process of the economics of a business, but that's not financial reporting. No. That's, no, and, and but, but let, let's not even talk about that. I, I kind of feel like, if you want my help on the biz dev side going forward, I, I have a very large network of, you know, these third party ad tech companies. I we deal with a lot of them. I know a lot of them pretty well. So my only thing would be, go through my LinkedIn, okay. look at those companies, okay. make sure your resume is updated for like biz dev related stuff um, and and write up a letter about you know and then and then let me I'm happy to help that that's great so what I've what I've started working on is you know three different versions of resume one that's very small start are we giving you outplacement services I don't know I haven't we haven't really figured this out yet I'm okay. just we should more, I mean well we should Lori hasn't figured out timing I mean I'm and I don't mean to say this in a uh, I didn't anticipate this when I kind of left where I was, and so I didn't get careful about protecting myself. So part of why I'm trying to make sure that yeah. if there's a little bit in the short term, that would be helpful. Um, or however there is an opportunity to kind of help some with some, some outplacement, that would be great. Um, you know, but, but again, what I'm, what I'm trying to go after is kind of to your point, one, that's a very 
more mid-size and even larger biz devy, but very entrepreneurial role. One is really small, um, not unlike what Hans ended up going to do, actually, which is how. Yeah, but this is good. So he's he's one of like a handful of guys at a little bitty startup in like a goof. Probably won't work, but doesn't really matter. You kind of yeah. go and try that entrepreneurial space, and his is in a kind of funky you know, connect the dots, kind of B2B lead gen sort of business. I'm actually gonna grab lunch with him on Friday um, and just say, look, you managed to make this sort of bridge to entrepreneurial, you tell me the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, so I'm trying to sort of write one for that um, because I am a generalist in operations um, and if you're a really small company, Trying to get going, that would be. No, that, that, that's look. That might be the right place. Yeah. So I mean, want you to do a little bit of everything, and you can. Sure. Sure. And so, and I've, I've, you know, I make sure that I'm reading and tweaking, you know, LinkedIn profile stuff to make sure that I'm kind of doing that. I mean, some of it's really just, you know, maybe a couple of minutes to sort of help you target. And I'll, I'll go look at your LinkedIn. Well, look at it. To, yeah. And and then I'm happy to sit down with you. But I would. I, do you ever read Ad Exchanger? Every day. Okay, so I mean, when you're on Ad Exchange, you're jot down names of companies that you feel like are because that that really does get into the you know the names of ad because that's the world that I kind of feel like I can help. Um, yeah, I mean, outside of that world, I I don't have the connections on the biz dev side. But sure, no, I mean in that I, world that we deal with a lot of them. Yeah, the um, you know it's I read Ad Exchange every day. I mean, I told you when I came over, I mean, part of. Uh, if there were more that were more interesting for me to do and trying to actually sell it as a business, like the guys, I became really kind of close to the guys at Loading from her DNA right. perspective, that whole angle and trying to figure out what on earth is going to happen with publishers and second party data and all that stuff. Right. And I don't know that you ever end up doing the test with the guys at Crosswise, but. Um, no, we didn't. Yeah. Unfortunately. I, do you know, I mean, I'm just curious about. You don't have to really tell me why. I just sort of, I thought they had the real deal, um, personally. I don't remember anymore why we didn't do it. I think. I think maybe JT became head of data. I'm like, well, it's not my job. So I'm like, okay. Oh, I mean, so that, like the way that, as you know, like the entrepreneurial sort of angle there, little bitty company trying to sort of, it has nobody in the U.S. Right. You know. No, that's, so, a, I mean, that's a great place to go. Yeah. Um, like low to me, I, you, know, you remember Jeff Burak? Did you yeah. deal with Jeff? So he's Only still there. Mm -hmm. So Jeff and I still maintain pretty close relationships. So and it's it, it's a very close buddy of his who's the CEO of low to me. So I mean, there are companies like that where at least I have good connections where I can put you in. And, and the other thing is, you know, most of those companies do post their jobs either in Ad Exchange or somewhere. Yeah. Um, so if there are specific roles, then at least, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of. Happy to go after the specific role if it happens to sort of pop up, but more you importantly, it's kind of get out there. Just yeah, to... more importantly, it's really just it's going after, um, you know, where there could be an opportunity where you've got companies like that that are in growth mode. I mean, what do you think is worth shying away from? I'm, I'm just you, 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 know, you gave me a few minutes, which is great. I just want to ask some questions about what you think. from in terms of what are what are what are category plays within the world that you touch, the sort of ad tech, ad data, whatever, that you actually think are just to be careful about because you think they're, uh, you know, closer to the sun or going to have the problem I mean, contextual soon. targeting is over. There are some companies out there still pushing their newfangled way of doing that, but I don't think that's it. I mean, everything right now is mobile web. Mobile web, mobile web, mobile web. You know, kind of deterministic data is certainly hot. Yeah. Video is still very hot. Um, that's where I see most of the so, efforts going these days. So on the, can I ask a couple of questions yeah. just to make, because um, we've talked about this before and you poo-pooed it, but on the deterministic data side in, in, in mobile and sort of kind of where cross-device comes in, do you think it has any connection at all that's viable in the Internet of Things kind of in-store beacons? Because you were like radically... I love the in-store beacon idea, but... Um, and I, I actually I have some right here if you'd like. <laughs> I literally bought them. And I was so into the idea at first. I've never used it or anything, but just, just um, the problem with beacons. I mean, beacons are huge, and I think they're going to be huge. 
They but require your app to be open. They, they require the app to be open. They require that you have an app that is scaled and being used. Right. Um, so you got to come up with a shop and marketing app that either gives you enough money to make it interesting. Yeah. Or um, this is why I'm asking. So to question. me, that's the issue. Is that like, you know, had, like we're, look, we're working with Michael Loba, Moby Save. Moby Save has. 15,000 users that he's essentially paying to use because he's giving them money back into their PayPal account. Mm -hmm. How do you build that? We're running a test in a few weeks uh, in People Magazine and People.com to see what effort it would take to get people to download that app, which is a shopper marketing couponing app. Now, once you have critical mass, if you have that millions, then beacons are really interesting. Now, they are using beacons for a variety of data collection things. Oh, yeah. So you don't have to have, the beacon can see the mobile IDs and they just capture mobile IDs. Yeah. No, but I, I think it's fascinating. I just don't know, you know, to me it's always theoretically very simple to talk about what's hard is getting people to actually use this shit uh, on a regular is there, basis. Is, is there, so just staying on this, because it's an area I'd like to make sure I'm really um, knowledgeable on as I kind of go out there. Just is there anything you've been reading lately? <laughs> you have more ADD than anyone. Um, make sure I might as well take it out. Is, it, is there anything I should be reading that's more current on? Because I, you're, I know you're right about the impediment to like. At parade, we drove, you know, tens of thousands of downloads, but then you got a utilization problem. You know, after the fact, and tens uh, of thousands of downloads is just not interesting, right? No, but you need that to get was, millions. I know. I so know. I mean, so I'm, I'm looking at some apps now that are heavily downloaded, heavily used, and not well monetized. So that's something that M and A and I have been working with, like Shazam, heavily used, heavily right. downloaded, not well monetized. Probably worth billions or something, but you know, I don't know what it's worth. I don't even know who owns it. So like that, you know. So there are, and you, then can you take? that kind of a, soft, a software development kit, which already has an install base, and now use both things. You know, that's yeah. kind of a, because yeah. it's so hard to get people to download and use it. That's the tough part. Yeah, okay. Um, the other side, I mean, the internet of all things, I, I don't know where that, you know, because my head is in the media world, so I don't really, everything is going that route, and we know that it's all happening pretty rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, from a media perspective, it's more about, you know, Virtual reality is hot, but it's going to take years to get to where they want to go. So we're, you know, we're we're in the midst of this deal with Google on VR, and mm -hmm. it's, it gets gets really complicated, and the technology is really complex, and most of it doesn't really exist yet. And yeah. what we're seeing today is really basic VR. The real cool stuff is probably five years away. I mean, it's so that stuff is far from prime yeah. time. No, I, and as interested as I am in that, I'm I'm more interested in. What you know, where in store sort of based beaconing can finally get unlocked because it can. It, 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 the technology yeah. is one hundred percent available. Yeah, but you got to get you, you got to get someone's got to figure out how to market something to people that makes it so compelling that you can kill FSIs once and for all. Is That's there, really what we're talking about. Is there anybody other than Michael who you felt like is doing something interesting? Well, there's. I mean, Michael's is the. The, yeah. the weakest of all of those. Ibotta is the number one, and there are a yeah. bunch of others. But there's not a lot of use there. No, no. there isn't. No. Ibotta has a much larger, we actually have a list of all of them with what their user, you know, monthly average, monthly active users are. Um, they're all much larger than MobiSafe. And the MobiSafe business model is no better than any of the others. So, um, you think the, the FSI guys of the world, like Velasquez, would have figured this out. Maybe that's what Wayne's going to do. I was going to say, you keep in touch with Wayne. Not he could use a biz dev guy working on that aspect of the lasses. I mean, that would be an interesting place to, uh, because to. that's, that's you know, there's we know there's money there. We know FSIs can't go on forever, but they continue to still make a lot of money. And there's News American Marketing. Yep. I know a couple people over there, but I don't I mean, they were they were doing like floor talkers. They, they were, they've been um, innovating for a while. I don't know if they've done anything with Beacons. But if you go into Kroger's and if you have a loyalty card, you can use beacons all day today because the loyalty cards, you know, people do use those. Yeah, connected. We probably talked about this. Ken Fenyo, who ran, who was the CRM guy at Kroger and then went to U Technologies and sold it to Kroger. And I kind of got to know each other. 
So I was trying to figure out how to like make that connection behind the scenes back at the parade. Did you ever deal with Don Humbeat and those guys? Yeah, so Stuart That's Aikens, it. who's now, it's 1058 now, right, is the company name? I don't know, yeah, what it's called. Now. So I, I got a little bit of time to make a connection with their, their, um, with their uh, CEO uh, for the U.S., uh, kind of pre-explosion, spinoff, rebranding, and everything. And so, you know, trying to get back in touch with him. Um, Merkel, do you know them very well? I've met with them a few times recently. Really interesting company. Great data. And they're doing really well. Yeah. So, Probably held. Yeah. Interesting. So they... So this is this is the third resume bucket that's out there. Right. So they've got a um, they have practice areas, right? So one of them is actually in media and entertainment, um, where they're just they're looking for an account person who works with clients to try to sort of activate right. their data and activate their sort of media buying and and all that other stuff. So um, I've got a couple one guy that I was pretty good friends with from iCrossing who's now there, and one other. You know, fairly good contact at Merkel. And that would be sort of the third bucket, which is is it's much more client facing. It's trying to figure out how to partner with the client to get them to sort of try new stuff. So it's it's biz dev of sort, but with kind of the activated client. So that's the third that's resume good. type. Yeah, and it's Dunn Humby is clearly a company like that on the list. M Merkel. That's big, yeah, big and private, and I don't fully understand because no one really understands exactly what they do or how they well, get that big. It's an agency big. and it's a data company. It's a, it's a kind of an interesting mix. Yeah, You're a big ad agency. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm. Those are, those are areas, and and I've like they're, a couple of their data retail guys. I got to know through Parade actually, um, because they they were they were they were asking sort of dabbling questions about beacons. So. Okay, so I'll, I'm gonna, you know, over the next day or two, kind of do a little poking around on your LinkedIn to try to see if there are some folks that okay, would make sense for introduction. Again, I've, I've started working through rewrite rights of, of, you know, resume versions. Um, you know, I'm trying to, like, shifting back to the data, I'm trying to make sure I'm sitting down, like, here's here's what I think you need as opposed to what you have to, to, to do all the right stuff. Um, you know, I'm, I'm making sure that I'm, you know, pushing to Bethany and or Lori, um, you know, anything that I should, right. obviously. I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do the wrong stuff. I'm, again, I'm trying to figure out, you know, I am trying to figure out if there are some short-term-y things to do just because. Well, I mean, if Chris needs the help, you know, Chris has mentioned that you were asking him and he was actually asking me, I'm, I'm fine with Chris having me work on some things. I just need for him to tell me what and how much money we're gonna spend and just so I know we're covered. But if it's just a few weeks here and there, I mean, I don't know what else there is. No, I um, I think what, so, so, and this is, it's more like after I first talked with Lori, I then immediately had a follow up with him. Like, you know, I was kind of transparent saying, I, you know, I'm gonna start thinking about new stuff and and he and I talked a couple of times about how there was um, a less here's a, here's an area where we think there's opportunity kind of approach to pursuits, and it was more who called us and let's call them back. Right. And he's like, I he's like, I don't feel like anyone else is going to do that. If anything, it's to spend you know two weeks to try to do a market assessment. Right. Like, here's where you could go, and you know, in this area, you're going to be competing with. Quads business, Blue Soho, and you know, so maybe you cooperatively compete, and over here you're competing with so and so, and try to figure out what the opportunities. Are. I mean, I think you just work with Chris and come up with a proposal, okay, um, and then let Chris come to Lori and I and say, "Here's okay. what he wants to do." All right, I'll I'll uh, I'll try to connect with him tomorrow. I think I'm supposed to talk to him tomorrow anyway. Um, anything else? It's. Uh, I mean, the biz dev stuff I think is the best bet. And just start to isolate companies. The only other thing I get is this Joe Meyer thread. Do you get that? No. Um, so I, I gave Scott McAllister. I gave it. I forwarded to him. I'll forward it to you. I don't know what's your what was your title here? GM or VP GM. GM. Um, I think you have to be a VP title or above to get onto the list. But it's a list of 
current openings, and it's a pretty extensive list. I'll forward it to you now. Okay. Um, take a look at it and see if there's anything there. If, it's, if everything's like SVP, EVP, or cheap, whatever, it may not be worth it. Um, although, you know, so you never know. Smaller companies, they have all kinds of... Uh, so I'm going to send it to you. Awesome. And then I can, I can nominate you. I can't guarantee you that he... I don't know how he decides... Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. But, I got yeah. on it from um, Alyssa Fishman. Um, I didn't even know about it. What is she doing? She's working with kind of a CFO of a nonprofit. And she, Good. She's really happy. Good for her. Um, and that's, um, I think she's really happy doing something a little bit different. And Yeah, that's great for her. Dave, Dave, Dave. Okay. What's your um, email address, Dave? It's still the, the David M. Robertson. David. Yeah. Yeah. Dave also works, though. Um, so what is it, David Dot Robertson? Mm -hmm. There you are. David M. Robertson, Yahoo. Can I use that? Yeah, sure. Or Dave yeah. Robertson, Time Inc. Which Either one. one. Either one. Yahoo's fine. Oh, okay. Yahoo's fine. David Time Inc. One, right? Okay. Um, one, so, so take a look through this. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, you know, so I mean, the, the positions are, um, I don't know, you, you'll see, there, there's definitely quite a bit of, well, there are VPs and stuff like that. So there, I, what, so here's how it works. I can get you nominated, I can nominate you. And if I nominate you, um, I don't use up any of my credits. I think I actually get some credits. The way he works it is, if you post a position in your company, VP level or higher, you get three credits. Um, if you ask for hey, what company is this that's hiring for this position? Do you have to use two credits or that? So it's based on credit. So I think I can nominate you without any problem, and then he decides. I don't know exactly how it goes through. But it's, the, the job listings are really good. And they're okay. worth, and so look through it okay. and tell me if you I'll think it's nominated. I will do that. Uh, and then we can go. Because okay. that's, I think that's like the best source. Of it. Don't lose your special I'll trickers. leave them out there now. <laughs> People ask me that. That'll be great. All right. All right. Thanks. Directly, but we would, well, we, yeah, we tell it directly, but we would, uh,